In this video, I'll take you through the entire journey of designing, 3D printing and casting this porcelain cup. Let's get started. Here you can see the first prototype 3D printed next to the unfired porcelain cup. Before we get there though, we need to design the cup digitally. Using Rhino and Grasshopper, I created the model and I tried to take inspiration from the candlers of a Greek pillar. The first prototype was printed and tested to see if the size worked. Next, I designed the mold with a specific 3D slicing technique in mind. The idea was to use vase mode to create the three mold parts as a single continuous line. To achieve that, everything had to be connected with a ring on the outside. With the digital mold ready, I moved on to 3D printing. A lid was added to give the mold more stability. The base section was also printed separately. To determine the required plaster amount, I first filled the mold with water and measured its weight. Multiplying that by 1.3 gave me the exact weight of the plaster needed. The plaster and water were put into a bucket together, left to sit for 3 minutes, then stirred again for 5 more minutes. Now it was ready to pour. I then carefully poured the plaster into the 3D printed mold. Maybe not careful enough. All mold sections were filled and after a short drying period I pressed the bottom halves together while the plaster was still slightly soft. Once the plaster had set, the lid was removed and cuts were made in the bottom mold section to make the removal easier. The molds were then placed in the oven to soften the 3D printed plastic, making it possible to cut away the walls. This step was repeated for all four mold parts. And remember, don't burn yourself. Now it was time to put the mold together. It didn't fit properly, so I shaved down some material to adjust the fit. Once aligned, the mold was secured using a rubber band. You can also use an old bicycle tube. With the mold ready, I poured liquid porcelain slip into it, filling it all the way to the top. Over the next 30 minutes, I periodically tapped it up. Once the walls were thick enough, the excess slip was poured out, leaving a hollow form inside. After some drying time, the mold sections were carefully removed, revealing the raw porcelain cup. The excess material at the top was trimmed with a cutter, and any small imperfections were smoothed out by hand. Finally, I closed the hole on the handle using some half-dried slip. And that's it, the cup is now ready for drying and firing. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more projects like this. See you next time.